Good evening, scouts and scouters. Learning how the compass works and how to use it in various situations is a skill scouts and scouters need to learn and practice. Let's look at a real situation that occurred at the U.S. Naval Academy involving an Eagle Scout midshipman from our troop during a survival exercise. He and several others were led out into a remote area in the mountains and left to fend for themselves and find their way back to their base camp. The Eagle Scout organized a group, studied the maps, provided and set up a course back to the base camp. Obstacles, mountains and lakes were in a direct path back to the camp. Maneuvering around those required many course changes. The Eagle Scout made those changes using his compass skills learned in scouting and led his group back to the base camp safely. Let's examine those skills taught during the time spent in our scouting program. Now let's take a look at how to use that compass together with a map. Let's apply what we have learned using the map and compass together. We're going to describe the top of the map in front of us. We're going to be able to find, look for and find magnetic and true north symbols, orient the map to magnetic north, and then determine bearings to and from several areas on the, on the map, A to B, B to C, and C back to A. Okay, here's the map that we're going to use for this exercise. It's a U.S. Geological Survey map. And let's take a look at a couple of items just to get ourselves oriented to the map itself. Okay, here we can see that this map represents the Bushkill Quadrangle on the Pennsylvania-New Jersey border. Let's now move down to the lower left-hand corner of the map and see the information that's provided there. Okay, we're down in the lower left corner of our map and we can see the compass rose. There's a line with the star on top. That indicates the direction of true north. And there's another line with MN at the top. That shows the direction of magnetic north. And we can also see that declination here, that is the difference in direction between true north and magnetic north, is 11 degrees to the west. Just ignore the line with GN at the top. That's grid north. You're never going to use it unless you're a surveyor or in the military. We're interested in true north, magnetic north, and the declination. Okay, let's get started. I have the scout compass in front of me, and what I need to do first as we look at this is to take the north map on it and Take it and turn it around until it goes under the direction of travel arrow. So north is under the direction of travel arrow. It's got to make sure that's perfect, and it is right now. Then I'm going to look at the map and find the magnetic north line. And then I'm going to place my compass edge right alongside that line. It's very important that it's right on the line. Now you can start moving it and what you need to do is take your dog, the red, the red needle, and place it in the doghouse which we've talked about before. So as we turn it and we get close to north, what we want to make sure we do is check that we're on that line magnetic line exactly and we are so as we look at the map we see that this map now is oriented to magnetic north okay ray's given us a nice explanation of how to orient a map using a compass and the magnetic north arrow on the map but suppose our map doesn't have a magnetic north arrow. Suppose our map looks like this one. Here we have a map that has an indication of true north in the upper right hand corner inside the red circle, but there's no indication of magnetic north. Can we still use our compass to orient this map? Yes we can so long as we know declination. 
Oh, okay, how do I find declination? Well, if you're really lucky, the map maker may have printed it somewhere on the map. That's highly unlikely, however. What's most likely is that you're going to have to determine declination on your own. Okay, how do I do that? Well, in our separate independent video on the basics of maps, we show you how to go on the internet and determine declination for your area of interest. So, once you've determined declination, how do I proceed? Well, like a lot of things in life, there's a rule for that. Before we get to the rule, though, we need to review two important concepts so that the rule will make sense. Here are the two important concepts to remember. One, declination is the difference in direction between magnetic north and true north. That is, declination is a measurement of magnetic north relative to true north. And number two, north can be both zero degrees and 360 degrees. North can be both zero degrees at the start of our clockwise circular journey around the compass, and it can also be 360 degrees at the end of our clockwise circular journey around the compass. Okay, now that we've reminded ourselves of those two concepts, let's go to the rule. Okay, here's the rule. East is least, west is best. That's how you remember it. East is least, west is best. If your declination is to the east, you're going to subtract the east declination from 360 degrees to determine the final magnetic bearing that you will use with your compass and your map. If your declination is to the west, West is best, so you're going to add the west declination to zero degrees to determine the final magnetic bearing to use with your compass and your map. Obviously, west declination is arithmetically a lot more simple. The declination is essentially the final magnetic bearing. Okay, once you have your fina final magnetic bearing, how do you proceed? Next, what you're going to do, once you have your final magnetic bearing, is you're going to turn your compass housing until the final magnetic bearing is at the index mark at the base of the direction of travel arrow. Once you've done that, you're ready to use your compass along with the true north arrow on your map to orient the map. Okay, let's come back to our Bushkill quadrangle map. We're going to pretend for a moment that we don't have a magnetic north arrow. We only have a true north arrow. Well, we've been able to determine that declination here is 11 degrees to the west. So our final magnetic bearing is going to be, because it's west declination, is going to be zero degrees plus 11, or 11 degrees. Now I've entered 11 degrees at the index mark at the base of the direction of travel arrow here. I've entered 11 degrees. And what I want to do now is line the edge of the compass up with the true north arrow. Because remember, that's all we have is a true north arrow. So I line the edge of the compass up with the edge of the true north arrow. And then what? I'm going to rotate the map and the compass together until the dog is in the doghouse, just like we did before. Rotate the map and compass together until the dog is in the doghouse. And when we've done that, when the dog is in the doghouse, there you go. The map is now oriented, just like it was before when we had a magnetic north arrow. By knowing declination, we can use that along with the true north arrow to orient the map. Okay, well, let's go back to Ray and do some exercises in finding point to point. All right, well, now that we've got the map oriented, we place our compass on the map. 
and we want to go from point A, which is where we are now, and we want to go to point B. So we take our compass and do our direction of travel arrow, always pointing the direction to which we want to go, not where we've been. So we now line up the edge of the compass with the line from point A to B. And if we look at this, how do we find a direction? We have to turn the compass rose until the dog goes into the doghouse. Here comes the doghouse. There goes the dog. And make sure our lines are set. And we now have the dog in the doghouse. Now, once the dog is in the doghouse, it no longer has to be on the compass. We can pick it up and we can look under the direction of travel arrow and we can see that the heading is 300 and looks like 10 degrees, 310 degrees. Okay, now we're at point B, right here, and we wish to go to point C because over here is a nice place to eat. So we're gonna set this up. How can we get to this restaurant that we wanna go eat? Once again, we line up the compass edge to the line going from point A to C. And of course, the direction of travel arrow is in the direction of what we want to travel. So like before, what we need to do is take our dog and place it in a doghouse. So we're gonna keep turning the compass rose until the dog goes in the doghouse. The dog is now in the doghouse. So now we can pick up our compass. We don't, we can pick up our compass and look underneath and see under the direction of travel arrow is 880 degrees, 080 degrees. To go from point B to point C, we travel 080 degrees. Okay, scouts and scouters, we've now shown you how to use a map and a compass together. At this point, it's up to you to get a compass, get a map, and practice these skills until you have confidence that you can perform them correctly. We thought you might like to construct a demonstration map board for yourself. One of the things we did, but first of all, you need to purchase a geo, geologic survey map. That's important. Then we went over to Home Depot and purchased a mounting board, a 3 8 inch foam insulated board. Then we secured that map to the board. On the map, we drew lines A to B, B to C, and C back to A. Then we covered the map with clear plastic to protect it from weather. There are many books, including the Scout book that handles map and compass, but one of the books I think is the best book I've ever seen for working with scouts and scouters and for whoever, is this book, The Basic Essentials of Map and Compass by Cliff Jacobson. We suggest you go out and purchase this book in which to work with your scouts. It's an outstanding book. We hope you found this uh, tutorial informative and we'll use it to help you practice, practice, practice using a map and compass together until you are comfortable with using these two tools as aids to navigation and maximize your fun on your field and backcountry adventures.